Hey guys, Cody here with Up to Code. Today I have my main man, Mike. Say hi to the folks at home, Mike. Hope you guys get your thinking caps ready because it's time to learn. Nice. <laughs> I want to give you guys an idea of what the advantages to this type of one-sided ICF system is, but we're going to do a whole separate video and focus in on it to give it really the credit that it's due. Is that the right terminology? It doesn't sound bad, yeah. Doesn't sound bad. Greg, is that right? Good enough. Okay. <laughs> we're on set today. We've just finished pouring some concrete, but we're using a new series. First time we've ever used it. It's called the Nadura One series. And what that is is exposed concrete on interior side and we have a, the half ICF on the exterior side. Now you can vice versa that role as well but the mostly the video today is specifically about all the tricks all the forming tips that we've learned basically in the last two pours of using this system and we want to give you just a whole bunch of tips things to think about and some formwork ideas so that when if you're doing the Nadura One series yourself you can be successful. So first off, we're going to show you guys some footage from the first set of formwork that we did, which actually I'll show you right here. We did some step footings and we actually poured the first three rows up to this level. So we're going to roll into that footage now, show you some of the tips, and then we'll come back and we'll actually wait till the very end of the video where I'll show you, Mike actually came up with a genius cold joint idea so that Right here is our cold joint from one pour to the next and it, we, we're actually going to make it look like a plywood joint right here. But you got to stay tuned, you got to watch the whole video to see what this looks like all stripped down and if that cold joint worked out or not. I guess first off when we were, Mike and I had set up in our shop and we wanted to just figure out how to cut the plywood and how to make our outside corners. We were told by a few guys and a few suppliers that said, don't buy the pre-assembled corners, but just run a full eight foot sheet or an eight foot foam block, and then just basically man make your own corners. So we've done that on this job, but I, I don't know if we'll be able to show you, but it might be a little tricky because we're up a little bit high, but Mike and I are actually kind of thinking of buying the pre-assembled corners. And we'll, we'll try to talk about that too. So um, when we were setting it up, we noticed that when we had the foam and the plywood uh, together as one block or one form, the plywood was curved. So first off the bat, we're like, okay, hey, well, we need to put down a kicker so that we can get the form work all straight. So let's show you what I've done here. Actually, Gio's with us today. Gio, do you want to grab me one of those GRA, GRK box of screws so we yeah, can show them? So what we've done here is we've, this is, we call this an L-tie. This is a two by four standing up. This is a two by four on the flat. Now this one has to be the height that it is. If it was sitting on top of this, it'd be hitting these screws. So you, you got to do it the way that we've shown. We've chalked out all our lines. We made sure the building was square and this inside edge was basically this formwork here. So we snapped a nice chalk line and we pre-drilled some holes with the hammer drill, a quarter inch drill bit. And Gio's got the GRK here, screws coming. Yes, Gio, you're a good man. So these are reusable screws and they're for anchoring into concrete. So those are the size, these are what they look like. And what's nice about these is they don't snap off. They're really durable. They grip really hard and they're reusable. So cost a little money up front, but so that's what we've set with those. And we had to make one minor adjustment so we can just buzz them out, move our chalk line a little bit and screw them back down. So that's what we've done there. So the kicker is what keeps the plywood straight. And then because we're gonna brace everything on this side, it just holds everything tight. So as we adjust down the road, it's all tied together. So we'll get into that. So you can see that we've ran the kicker down these step footings. So that kicker just maintains our chalk line, keeps the formwork nice and straight. The reason we have step footings is because this is actually a drive-in garage level, main level garage with a cabin above. 
So we have to step these footings so that across the front of the where the overhead doors are, we're four feet or more below frost so we don't get frost keying. Another thing is we actually just used two inch, the Nadura two inch screws to suck this plywood into the two by four on the kicker. And it was actually, we were worried that it would be too short. So I actually pulled it in nice and tight. We actually tried even pre-drilling some holes and it worked better just to drive the screw right through raw lumber and it sucked that formwork really tight. So it worked really well. And what's nice about that is we didn't poke through the other side of the formwork so that later after usage and usage of these forms, we don't have a million holes and splinters in it. So we haven't damaged the exposed side, the inside of the formwork, so that when we peel these off, it's, the exposed concrete's gonna look really good. So then we, the next thing is these ribbons. So the formwork, the plywood's only 18 inches tall to match the ICF foam block. So right down the center is we have two stacks of plywood. Now, the reason for the ribbon is for a multitude of things, but mostly the plywood just sitting on top of another. Now, the hydraulic force of concrete can actually cause those to lift and spread apart. So we don't want that to happen. And so the ribbon holds those down tight and it also just keeps the plywood nice and flush so that later when we peel this off, all the joinery looks really nice and tight. So you can see even right here, it's just nice and super flush. So you just have to make sure to scratch these off and make sure there's no concrete debris on your two by six. Otherwise you'll, you'll get some major hiccups there. The other thing is now that the ribbons are here, we've gone fairly excessive with the screwing and we matched the layout of our snap ties. And that way, when we put up our shields for our bracing, we're not on top of any of these screws. So it might seem a bit excessive having all these screws, but because our shields are attached to the two by six, we need the two by six attached to the plywood so that when we adjust this wall back and forth, when let's say we had to pull it, it's not just gonna separate the two by six from the plywood. So here is a common buck that we use in a normal ICF wall. We've just manipulated the, the width of it to incorporate and work with this system. Now we talked to the homeowner and he was perfectly okay with this situation. I am gonna figure out a second way to do a buck so there is no exposed wood. But really this buck is flush with the ICF on the outside and then it is perfectly just butts right into the plywood. Later after the concrete's poured, we'll peel the plywood off and this is flush with the concrete. So if you want a truly exposed concrete finish with no wood, you would have to incorporate this and have the concrete come around. So you'd have to actually notch this back. There'd be a few other ways. I'd have to figure out how to do that. But for this one, it's just really simple. It's a wood buck. We can attach a door, a window from the outside. Uh, we're gonna cap it with metal so that the overhead doors have metal coming into the jam. And then we're just gonna wrap the metal around here and overhang it onto the concrete a little bit so you don't see the exposed wood. You could always paint it if you wanted to. It's just, this is a really simple buck. We have a little bit of sill gasket and we've porcupined it with screws so that the concrete bonds onto the screws and just holds the buck in place. So this is just a really simple setup for this. Here's our man-made corners. We're still, the jury's still out whether we like them or not. We'll let you know after we pour this. We do have to be careful because there is no support in here. So these could blow to smithereens. And the problem we're having with these is just, it's really hard to maintain our dimension, but the inside of our formwork's all really flush. So that's something that we can trust and be true with. These two by sixes, then later when we're ready, we'll strap two by sixes and we'll screw it and we'll do a strong back. And we'll show you that after of how we had to force these or basically reinforce these corners so that they don't blow apart when we're pouring. One issue that Mike and I had when we we're putting the formwork all together, we didn't really realize it till after, is the sheets are eight feet, but they're actually, some are eight foot big, like some are actually eight foot and one sixteenth. Now, what we were told is when the foam arrives, it's typically eight foot on the big side. But when we got our order of the, these foam panels, they were all an eight shy of eight feet. So then we had 
plywood that's rigid, you can't change the dimensions, and then you have a foam system that isn't perfect to size every time. Now, that, that's not an Adura issue, that's just any foam company has that issue, is because you can't make foam perfectly sized every single time. Sometimes it grows a little more than others. Now, because our plywood, like good thing this building's only 24 by 32, but if every joint were out an eighth of an inch, this foam is short an eighth of an inch on every joint. Well, on three joints on a 32 foot building is three eighths of an inch. So our foam is actually a bit smaller and our snap, our ties are actually going out of square because we can't manipulate it. We can't grow the foam because when we snap the next row on, it just sucks it back in tight. One thing that we're probably gonna do is just very, very carefully cut these plywood when we're done this job all to eight feet perfect on the nose because then that way we know that if a block is eight feet it'll work great if a block is eight foot on the big side we can just rasp that foam and make it eight foot perfect but it's when the foam is a little bit on the smaller side that it starts to bug your ear up so on a big huge building long it would you would have to make adjustments along the way and the way, I guess the way you would have to do an adjustment is you would have to take, let's say this joint, you would have to cut a piece of plywood. Instead of cutting it perfectly 24, you'd cut it like 23 and three quarters and you would make this plywood small. And then the next eight foot sheet would butt up tight and you would start to shrink your plywood on the inside to, to allow for smaller foam on the outside. Now what Mike and I were actually thinking like our footings are very, very good. We, we take the time to make sure they're bang on level. But if you have one little rock in the way and your plywood's sitting on it and rocking, that's gonna be an issue for you. So what Mike and I were thinking is on the next job is maybe cut some little strips of plywood that are half an inch thick and three quarter inches wide. And we would just put like on an eight foot piece of plywood, we would just have three little pieces of plywood that it would sit on. So we don't have to cut the nubs off where it sits against the footing, but then the plywood's just sitting on three points rather than along the whole footing. And the reason that would be is just to kind of take out that if you have any rocking in the plywood. So I hope that makes sense at home. Hope I'm describing that okay. So you saw footage from the first set of formwork that we did in the first pour. Now there's a few things that we miss and we're gonna run through that right now. One thing I forgot to mention before is our shields or our bracing. Now with this one series, we're actually, we went four foot centers on all our bracing. And that's because we don't have the form lock that you would typically have in a traditional ICF wall. And the form lock just snaps in and kind of helps keep that wall straight. But with this one-sided ICF, we don't have the form lock. So we have to trust our, on our bracing to keep our wall straight. So for here, we went every four feet. And what's nice about using the ribbons is we can select the spacings any way we want. Whereas with the traditional ICF, you're kind of bound to keeping it with your snap ties, which is every eight inches. The other thing that I like is right here, you can see this is Mike's genius idea of keeping all the shields at the same height so that our scaffold planks at the same height because this area was where it was stepped down before but he just used old cut off pieces of form ply screwed them back into the tie holes you can see them down here and then we just did our little fake kicker at the same elevation as everything else behind me and this just holds the shield up and then we can set our formwork all our scaffolding and everything off of that so i thought that was the cool thing that Mike did. And that's why he's the foreman. He, like I said, he's the guy taking care of all the details and making us look good. So thanks Mike. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to show you what the overhead door buck looks like after we poured that first lift. So you can see it's flush with the foam on the exterior, but when you come around to the interior side, now our shields are still in the way, but you can see nice exposed face and the wood buck gets left just as it is. So like I said before, is when we do the metal work for the jams of our overhead door, we'll just bring the metal through the jam across here with a little hem, and then we could just tack it. So we cover the wood and, you know, just try to stay, maintain that exposed concrete look as best as we can. 
but this type of buck is the simplest to do. Now in another video, we'll shoot two versions of the buck and that'll be a separate video. And we kind of came up with a creative way to have an exposed concrete edge here, but still have wood to fasten to on the exterior side. So you want to stay tuned for that. From here down is what we filled the first round. And like I said before, we weren't a fan of the man-made corners. We're going to shoot another video on, and we're going to basically just in our shop, try the preformed corners because it just doesn't look the greatest. And we, that was probably our biggest struggle is maintaining dimension because we were just making these handmade corners. But you can see the brace work that we had to do for the last three rows that we've poured. And the strong back, it obviously held because there's concrete in it right now. And you can just see the way that the strong back system works to keep those corners from opening up on us. Another thing about the corners is you can see this line of spray foam here. And this is what we do in all of our ICF work, whether it's standard ICF or the one series, is we spray foam the corners like four feet in from each way. And that basically just stops any uplift in the corners, which we've noticed in the past is you either have to strap it down, but the best for us is just spray foam those corners and it stops those corners from uplifting. So that's what we've done in this series and we do in all the standard ICF installs as well. And while we're here on this side, I might as well mention, so the scab work, we went a little heavier with scabbing and that's just wherever the two foam blocks meet. And because we knew we wanted to hit this heavier with the vibrator, we did, this is just basically extra insurance that everything stays tight and to dimension. We don't want any blowouts. And then also you can see our string line set up. So one very important thing that you'll want to do is before you pour any type of concrete work, you want to lean all your bracing inward. And that way when you pour, the concrete can force it out a bit, but it's always leaning in because it's easier to push your wall to your string line than your wall leaning outward and trying to pull it back in. So that's just super important. Don't ever forget that tip. And just like that, we're all done. Well, let's check out the finished product. Now, can you guys tell where the cold joint is? Well, that's what we were talking about earlier. We we're halfway up, which is right here. It's not totally perfect, but we're happy, customer's happy, and everything looks really good. Now remember, we have a video specifically on how we did the cold joint, and that just allows you to do multiple pours on the same project and still make it look really nice. If we would have just poured that willy-nilly, it would have looked like a river flowing through the wall and it would have looked terrible. So we're happy with that. Let me know what you guys think of the video, if it's helpful. Uh, obviously our forming tips and our tricks and our ideas for you guys at home must be pretty must be pretty valid because obviously the work looks really good. And uh, with that, I'm going to sign off. Thanks for tuning in. Check you next time.